After 20 months on the road with Bianca, I'm now traveling solo. I don't have much plan other than trying to reach Gorongosa. I didn't know it at the time, but this was the beginning of a new chapter, both in my life and for Lost in Africa. <laughs> so I've had my hair cut in some pretty interesting places over, <laughs> over the last 20 months. I've actually, I've never really had bad luck till today, I guess. I'm <laughs> shame. The guy got the fade on the side, perfect. And then you try to cut the top and my hair was so long and my hair is so thick. And as you try to cut it, you're trying to use the shaving machine, not scissors. And as you try to cut it, it went, I said to him, no, 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 you try to fix it, but like, there's no fixing it when you cut it that short. So I said to him, no man, don't stress, just cut the whole thing that way. But it actually might work out, you know, if I'm, if I'm gonna be roughing it in the bush for the next couple of weeks, uh, super short hair, it's gonna be nice and easy. I'm really sad to see B go, and I, I'm not gonna lie, I teared up a little bit. It's, um, you know, we've had an unreal adventure, not just on the Lost in Mozambique trip, but it's been 20 months since we had a permanent address, and it's, it's been really incredible. It seems like that is coming to an end, but as I said from the beginning, no matter how this all works out, I'll never regret doing what we've done. We've had insane experiences. I'm never gonna forget these two years. You know, sometimes you have a two-year two period in your life and nothing truly remarkable happens. Um, and for the last two years, every month, the remarkable things have happened, and it's been really incredible. Where the next chapter takes us, who knows? Um, but we'll see, and I'll embrace it, and I'll work very hard to make it work no matter what. We had an incredible five nights at Villanculos Beach Lodge. But um, it's time for me to move on. I can't stay in luxury for so long. It's gonna make me soft. <laughs> so I'm moving in Villanculos still, still in Villanculos. And I'm heading to it to, it's called Baobab Camp, I think. It's on the other side of town. It looks really nice. It's a campsite and hostel. But the big thing is I can set up there. I can have a base. I can cook, I can do all of my normal things. So that, that's awesome, I'm quite excited for that. Get back to the overlanding life after like a little bit of an interlude of luxury there, which was super cool. And then I'm gonna head up to Gorongosa. So I just need to make sure that I, they still have camping for me, that I can go through them. And from there, I'm still not sure, we'll see. I'm at my new campsite, Bear Bad Camp, it's cool. It's really nice, shaded, grass, grass campsites. Uh, so if, everything you need is a, as an overlander, basically. There's power, power points as well, which is a luxury that we don't always have. Um, I'm gonna set up now. And I just wanted to show a little trick that I have. Uh, so one of, the, one of the things that are very important to get right when you're setting up a rooftop tent is to get the car flat. Um, because if the car's not flat and you're, and you're sleeping at an angle, it's uh, very uncomfortable no matter what. Um, and what I use is my mud tracks. This is my desk setup. And there's a bear bear. There's my backdrop, which is pretty, pretty damn cool. I make some dinner and then have an early night at my portable little home. I call this dish chicken with all the other stuff I have in my drawers and noodles. <laughs> okay, that chicken is looking really good. It's not the world, it really, really hot. Spicy and sweet yumminess. Uh, I'm very happy with my meal. And I will see you all in the morning because after this, I'm going to go climb on up there and uh, get an early night. Hey guys, so <laughs> I've, had a, I've had a fairly quiet couple of days uh, just getting a bunch of editing done. Staying here at Berbab, Campston, Villanculos. That's my little work setup. Um, I've been very good about working today. I'm pretty chuffed. And there's the baobab that the camp's named after. It's pretty cool, it makes for an awesome backdrop. After a few days of just chilling in camp and catching up on some editing, it was just about time to get back on the road. But first I wanted to get one more day of scuba diving in before heading north. Bon dia! Bon dia! Como está? Bon dia! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, guys, have a good day. Bom dia. Let's go diving. How beautiful. Can't wait to see what it looks like underwater. I joined a group of trainee divers on their first ocean dive ever. It's always amazing sharing this with new divers, their first glimpse of the underwater world, and they were rewarded with some incredible sightings for their first time. After a wonderful day in Bazaruda with Odyssey, I headed back to camp for an early night. I had a long drive into the unknown tomorrow. The low tide leaves a huge stretch of beach exposed, so I took a walk on it early on my last morning and found a hive of activity with fishing boats getting repaired and women collecting the morning catch to take to the markets. It was so beautiful, I vlogged about it, but I think the stills are even more powerful. While I love the adventure and overlanding, I don't think you should travel Africa without telling people stories. These beautiful wild places do not have a sustainable future without community engagement, and it will be one of the focuses of the channel going forward. I ended up staying in Villanculos for a bit longer than expected, but I'm now finally making my way north by myself, which is a bit daunting. Now I'm heading into the unknown with uh, without Bianca, but with Jabari luckily, so I've got everything that I need hopefully. Villanculos has been incredible. It's, it's a lot more Mozambican. It's a lot less commercial than somewhere like Tofu. Um, in Villanculos, I mean, you walk around the market here and there's sections of the market where they don't even speak Portuguese, never mind English. Um, it's just the local languages. But yeah, so time in Villanculos is done. I'm gonna take some photos of Jabari with the beautiful ocean behind. I mean, look at that. <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's um, breathtaking. So I'm going to stock up on groceries in town here, fill up with diesel, reinflate the tires. The tires are a little bit soft from all the sand driving we've been doing, and then head north to Gorongosa. I really hope I have no run-ins with the Mozambican police on the road. I'm going to be super diligent about sticking to the speed limit. I think it's about a 10-hour drive there from here, and that's to cover about 400 kilometers. So that should give you an idea of what the road's like. I'm guessing it's not going to be very good. So stop on the way up and then Gorongosa, which you know, it's, um, when B left, I wasn't sure exactly why I was continuing and what the purpose was. And I have moments of real doubt, you know, and I question why I'm still driving north and why I'm still exploring. But, um, 
Gorongosu was always the spot that I wanted to reach. It was the, it was going to be the turnaround point of this trip, and it's been a bucket list destination for me since I was a kid. And when you know, when I was a kid, it had been absolutely devastated. But it's just one of those legendary parks. I've got goosebumps even thinking about it. It's like, it's right up there with the Krugers and the Serengetis and the Okavangos. It's one of those spots in Africa that. If you're a bush person, you have to visit at some point. So I'm very excited to go there. I'm gonna miss this spot. Just uh, got stopped by someone else asking me for cash, just randomly. It's the problem with Jabari is that um, people presume if you drive a car like this, you're rolling in it. Uh, they don't understand that actually I spent all the money on the car and I'm in debt. <laughs> but yeah. One of the most important rules when traveling way off the beaten track in Africa is stock up whenever you can. You're never sure when you will be able to find good meat and groceries again, never mind fuel and water. Yeah, stop and get some power from the local bakery, stop and get some onions from the ladies on the side of the road because they're better than the onions sold in the supermarkets, and then full Jabari up and then psh, northwards we go. show you guys that I couldn't resist the powerful lunch. <laughs> this bread in Mozambique is so delicious. So. So after finally getting out of Villanculos, I'm heading north again, on my own and with a bucket list destination on the horizon. But first I had to deal with one of the worst roads I've ever traveled, and more corrupt cops and army than you could imagine. So I am at the bridge over the River Save, which is quite an important geographical location in Mozambique. This is a massive new bridge that's going in here. I'm guessing it's getting built by the Chinese, which uh, you would think is a good thing, you know, infrastructure development and all of that. It's a good project, but um, I just can't help but feeling that it's pretty exploitative. It's, they're building these bridges and these roads to get the raw resources out of Africa as fast as possible. You know, within one kilometer of each side of the river, I was asked for bribes and on the bridge itself. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, it's, um, it's difficult and people get upset. They're, Jesus, look at that bus going past me. Uh, <laughs> People get upset if you just say that it's part of traveling Africa, but unfortunately it really is. There's not much you can do about it. You gotta stay good humored, be polite and respectful, but uh, be insistent on saying no, you know, and as long as you're not in the wrong, that generally works out. It is difficult though, because I mean, the first guys, there's five or six army guys with AK-47s um, telling me that they want money or cool drink. You know, it's, um, Shouldn't be that way, but I guess uh, it's the price you pay to travel to these incredible spots off the beaten track in Africa. That, you know, I always try and strike a balance between being very polite and when you greet them the first time, I always try and greet them in uh, a local language or in this case in Portuguese, which isn't a local language, but it's uh, one of the national languages, yeah. And then say no. The, the tricky part is you gotta, you gotta start getting a little bit irritated. Like they're wasting your time a little bit when they ask and ask and ask again. But um, that's the part where you can really offend. People in uniform are used to and demand respect. And sometimes they don't deserve it, but you still need to give it to them. Otherwise, you're gonna have a very difficult time traveling through Africa. There's a bus flying up behind me again on 
these terrible roads full of potholes and this bus. Jesus Christ, and I'm doing the speed limit. <laughs> yeah, so Africa, not for sissies. <laughs> oh my goodness. Bus and trucks and potholes. Absolute chaos. Uh, yeah. I'll be quite excited when I get into the bush and get off this big main road. I pulled into Buffalo Camp as the sun started to get low. A trusted stop off point on this terrible road and a much needed respite. There are wild camps marked on iOverlander, but I would strongly advise against using them. Good morning guys, awesome night, can, uh, can recommend stopping off in Buffalo Camp if you're making, making your way up north by road. Speaking of roads though, this is possibly the worst road I've ever driven on. And the only redeeming feature is that it, touch wood, seems to have slowed down the big trucks because uh, yesterday the, the trucks and the buses were flying along, which made it worse. It's going to be an interesting day, I'm expecting a long day in the car. To give you an idea of how different distances in Africa are, I'm on a tar road, I'm on the EN1 it's called, it's the main national highway that runs the length of Mozambique basically, and I have got 249 kilometers to go, and I'm expecting it to take me almost the whole day, so I'm going to go slowly and drive as safely as possible because uh, this road is definitely hazardous. I swear every single policeman is going to stop me and I think half the reason is because I just want to look at Jabari but I have not gone past a single cop or army guy that has not pulled me over and they don't pull all the cars over you see most of the trucks just flying on through I think there's a bit of a darker element to all the army stops as well I don't want to speak out of turn because it's not an area that I have a huge amount of expertise in but uh, as I understand it I'm heading into the heart of what was the opposition during the civil war so in effect, the losing side of the Civil War, Renamo. From what I believe, it still kind of is. I think there are still Renamo uh, rebels on uh, Mount Gorongosa. So I think that's also part of the reason for all the military checkpoints that we're going through. I think I've been driving for about an hour and I've gone through four checkpoints and every single one has stopped, asked me for a cool drink and then sent me on my way. <laughs> it's gonna be a long day, but I'm in good spirits and uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it. Mozambique had a terrible civil war that raged between 1977 and 1992 with a flare-up again between 2013 and 2019. It claimed over a million lives and the scars are still present, not only on the people but on the wildlife. Renamo had a major base on Mount Gorongosa. One of the real challenging things about traveling through these rural parts of Africa is that there's horrible poverty and you want to help every single person but uh, you can't, you know, and I have to just believe that in my small way I can, I can help improve the economic situation on the ground by, and that just seems so arrogant to even say, but you know, that's, that's what I would love this channel to become eventually is, you know, expose more people to these places and make more people aware of it and if I, just a handful of people visit Gorongosa because they've watched this video then uh, then I've done my job and then hopefully I've helped these communities you know albeit in a very very small way and yeah that's a, that's the only way that I can actually help them Yes, I'm getting really close to go goes. The terrain's changed entirely. It's become mountainous, it's a different bush type. Um, it's getting really beautiful um, and I'm getting really excited. Uh, this is uh, 
this has been a bucket list destination for a very long time and it's uh, you know I've had a lot of doubts about coming up here by myself and when you know when Bianca flew home that cost me a bunch of money and I don't really have money to spare at the moment and, but uh, I'm almost there if it's half as incredible as I hope it will be it'll be an absolutely incredible stay so I'm at Gorinkoza National Park, oh, finally. I feel like I've been wanting to come here for 20 years. Not I feel like, I have been wanting to come here for 20 years. So it's a, it's a real bucket list destination for me. And after that journey to get here, that road is certainly, <laughs> certainly challenging. So to, to now be here, it's, um, it's a pretty incredible feeling, I must be honest. I'm really, really, really Join me next week as I explore one of the most beautiful parks in Africa and see how it went from a focal point in Mozambique's War of Independence, how it was decimated during the Civil War, and how an incredible public-private partnership has made it one of Africa's greatest comeback stories. Spoiler alert, it was worth the drive.